So I got this tablet earlier this year. Well, I did a little video on it, just showcasing what it does, kind of unbox it, all that good stuff. I got a comment that said they wanted to dig deeper into the gaming aspect of it. So let's do some gaming on it. Amazon has never let you fully uh, install another operating system on it, but you can kind of mold it and massage it to where you can get it to pretty much a, um, a stock Android experience. I'm gonna get the cable to connect the tablet to the PC. That's gonna be a USB-C to USB 2.0. All right, so that's plugged in. Amazon Fire Toolbox. Okay, so this is what I have here. Okay, so OTA updates can no longer be disabled and manage Amazon apps. Some system apps can no longer be disabled. Let's do the EXE. Let's see what we got. Okay, now I gotta go to enable USB debugging on the tablet. I bought Fire Tablet and tap the serial number seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A new menu called Developer Options should appear. All right, we see that down there. Okay, so let's go back to our toolbox. No device detected. Oh, I have to turn them actually on, okay. USB debugging. Okay, there we go. Now we have USB debugging enabled. You turn on developer options when you tap that seven times and then you have to go into developer options and actually turn on USB debugging. It doesn't just turn on by default. Now USB de debugging is enabled. Fire toolbox detects it. Run tool, let's see, display. We'll put our display timeout networking. Is that default DNS? That's actually pretty cool. We'll just do Google DNS. Uh, location services, let's turn it off. We'll keep on automatic Wi-Fi. Oh, you can do VPN settings also? I don't wanna get into all that right now. But yeah, that's pretty cool though. <laughs> Randomize my ID, I guess let's go ahead and do it. I don't, I don't know what changing your advertising ID does, but it's here. Let's try it. Disable Amazon apps. Complete debloat. <laughs> oh, just debloat me. Microsoft Launcher, that sounds fun. Enable widget support, custom keyboard, hacker's keyboard. I mean, of course I have to do that. Designed for the sole purpose of bringing all the missing keys, such as the alt key, function key, escape key, etc., from a traditional keyboard to an Android virtual keyboard. I like it. This is becoming more fun than I was expecting it to be. And uh, I remember I, I've used this before, this, this tool, and it was not this robust. As, I don't remember it being this robust. Let's Yeah, let's do that. Okay, there, there may be another way I have, I have to do that. Like they said, some things just may not work. Hmm, okay, it looks like it's going through now. Okay, let's go. Okays, okays. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I think it's working. I think it's working. We got Google Play working off a couple clicks. I'm gonna install an emulation front end called Digisho. So we're gonna open that up whenever we uh, wanna go into like gaming mode and it'll turn our tablet kind of into more of like a gaming appliance. Download platforms. Let's do, let's do MAME. No Nintendo. Hey, look at me. As a guy with no kneecaps, you don't wanna download Nintendo. I'm gonna install this disc that I purchased with American dollars. I'm gonna put that in to the Fire Max 11. I have the original hardware. I have two PS2s right here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna play my game, okay? Good, we're good, we're good, okay? Okay, there we go, okay. Those are the settings I needed to change. So now I can actually go into the file structure. Now that the Fire tablet is here, it's detected now that I changed those settings. This is the folder that I made here. It's got Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in it already. So I'm gonna finish getting all the PS2 stuff installed and then we will see how the user experience is from when we go to work mode on the tablet to play mode on the tablet. So I thought it was gonna be as simple as just moving the files over from my desktop PC 
over on to the Fire 11 tablet, but it wasn't that easy. Like I mentioned earlier, to enable file transfer, you physically have to go into the Fire 11's menu and allow file transfer via USB. And it does seem to reset itself. I don't know if it resets itself after a reboot or just after you disconnect the cable, but it does reset itself. So you do have to go back in next time you connect it and go back into that menu and allow for file transfer via USB. That got annoying after a while because at one point it would just stop syncing and allowing me to actually access it on my Windows 10 machine. So I scrapped that idea, grabbed an SD card, and tried to physically move the files over. And that actually does work. I won't say seamlessly because it does require a tool to get the SD card tray out. So it is a little annoying. It's not just, you know, you pop it in, pop it out like a Raspberry Pi. I messed up because I formatted the SD card on my Windows 10 machine and moved the game file over onto it. And then I popped it into the Fire 11 tablet. Well, the Fire 11 tablet wants to format it its own way, the way I didn't have it formatted already. And it, you know, puts its file structure and directories on it the way it wants to. And then you're able to use it. So all the work that I did on formatting and on my Windows 10 machine, Machine was wiped anyways because the Fire 11 tablet formatted it by itself already. So after I moved it back onto the Windows 10 machine, moved a file onto it, moved it back over to the Fire 11 tablet, I was ready to abandon that method also. So then I resorted to the option of just downloading the files directly from a server. And I didn't have any issues with that, but if you are going to sail the seven seas, just remember to turn your VPN on on your Fire 11 tablet if you're thinking about downloading files from some of those more remote servers, you will call them. But after it was all said and done, I went ahead and got Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater installed, and I went ahead and got Gran Turismo 3 A spec installed. And I'm looking forward to playing these games because I didn't have a PS2 when it was current gen. I was an Xbox kid, so I missed out on a lot of those PS2 games. Coming from N64 and then going over to Xbox, and then coming back to PlayStation later on with the PS4, I kind of skipped the PS2 and PS3. So going back and playing a lot of those games has been pretty fun. And I installed a couple of PSP games I want to benchmark test as well. I want to do a little bit of upscaling and see what this Fire 11 tablet can handle when you kind of crank up the settings for a PSP game. Let's talk about the difficulty level of this project. I'm gonna give it a two out of five. I don't think this is a difficult project at all. And as long as you can find and follow the instructions that I'll link in the description, you'll be all set. Let's play some games and look at some benchmark numbers. 